you guys been, man? I mean, it's only been over four months. Get with the program, people. Nah, I'm back, and uh, I know it's been a long time. Um, I've been dealing with life, you know, and uh, that's a big story for everybody in the BC, it seems like. Uh, a lot of people are dropping out, taking long hiatuses. I don't know what's going on, but I guess if you're not in a good frame of mind, you can't really do a good video. Um, but uh, I'm feeling pretty good right now, so I thought I'd knock one out for you guys. And I'm gonna try and do it a little. I'm gonna do it a little differently this time. Uh, I'm gonna be showing two albums per section of video, and it'll be spanned out over several days. So hopefully, maybe a week, to ten days, I'll have this video posted. So uh, let's just get going, I guess. Um, Okay, the first one I'm going to start off with is a reissue by a band called Brain Ticket and their early kraut rock from 1971. And this was originally released on the Bellafon label in Germany. And uh, this is a reissue from last year on the Lilith label, I believe, if I pronounced it correctly. And uh, it's not being hyped as a limited edition or anything like that, amazingly enough. But uh, this label, Lilith, has reissued this album like three times over the past 11 years. And this is the latest pressing. So th a lot of people just love this album. It's To me, it's kind of a hard listen. And I'll tell you why, it is extremely trippy and psychedelic. And I love that sort of thing. But what makes it a bit of a hard listen is the female that's on the album. She doesn't sing. Like on side one, it's this all spoken word. Um, and then on side two, she starts hallucinating very, very heavily, supposedly. And she's just rambling and babbling, and it's it's a bit over the top, but um, it, it is pretty uh, groundbreaking in its own way. And uh, so, yeah, the, the the name of the album is Cottonwood Hill, and uh, that was actually the the original name of the band when they released their first single they were called Cottonwood Hill and then by the time the album came out they changed their name to Brain Ticket and called the album Cottonwood Hill so this has got some pretty interesting liner notes that I wanted to share with you it's got advice and it's got warning the advice is after listening to this record your friends won't know you anymore in the warning, always listen, or only listen once a day to this record. Your brain might be destroyed. Um, I don't know, man. That sounds like Zombieville to me. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I definitely have not been listening to this album more than once a day because I do not want to become a zombie. Brains. <laughs> Remember that? But um, yeah, this is, this is a pretty cool album. And it's on black, no, it is not black vinyl. It's on Hazy Clear vinyl. 180 gram European pressing. Sounded pretty damn good. So uh, I definitely, uh, I definitely do dig that album. I would rate it probably three and a half stars at best. A lot of people go higher, but for me, three and a half stars. And uh, before I move on, um, the band split up a little bit after that album came out, and a few of the members uh, formed the band Toad. And I think maybe you've seen that album flashed around in the VC a few times. I don't have it, but you can't miss it. It's got a picture of this giant toad on the cover. So. Um, I think that will uh, cover that album. Let's move on to the next one. 
The next one I got is a record store Black Friday release of Big Brother and the Holding Company, a combination of the two. Uh, this was released last year. Let me get the hype sticker for you. So it's master from the original analog tape. Um, that doesn't mean that it absolutely sounded incredible because it, it, it didn't. I mean, it sounded good, but not quite as good as you would hope. But you got to remember, this was recorded for a movie, so maybe they just didn't have the best equipment available. But uh, it's not bad at, by any means. So it's very, very cool in the way that uh, you get to hear the complete unedited version of Ball and Chain. So if you saw the movie, there's about two minutes that they edited out of the performance that's like sort of in the center of the song. They edited that out and then they spliced it together. I think it was just to make it more viewer friendly for the movie audience. Um, it's in a way I can see why they did it, but I, I hate I hate when they edit stuff. But anyway, you get to hear the full thing. Now a little quick background on this. Uh, Big Brother and the Holding Company, they were only scheduled for one day. And that was gonna be Saturday, June 17th. Okay. For some reason their manager stuck his big nose in everybody's face and told them not to film the band. So the cameras were turned down for Saturday's performance. When Janice found out, she was just totally heartbroken. So what they did was they called the band back for Sunday, uh, June 18th, to do a set in the afternoon. Saturday's set was in the evening, and uh, Sunday's set was uh, during broad daylight, which was what was used in the movie. So for Saturday's set, you got Down On Me, Combination of the Two, Harry, and Roadblock. Now those two songs, they only performed live. And then Ball and Chain. And for Sunday, they did Combination of the Two, Harry, and Ball and Chain. It was a much shorter set. But, it, in a way, historically, I'm glad that it happened that way because Janice came back for Sunday and her performance of Ball and Chain was just incredible. I mean, she was on, on fire. Sunday's Ball and Chain blows away the Saturday performance by a long shot. So in that sense, it, it, it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing that it happened the way that it did. But um, in, in, another, in another way, it's kind of sad that we, don't, we didn't get to see the first, first performance, but I believe this photo is taken from that Saturday performance. So this is a limited edition of 4,000 copies worldwide. It comes with this cardboard inner sleeve with a reproduction of the reel-to-reel -reel tape box and uh, some interesting liner notes on the back. It doesn't go into a lot of detail, but the liner notes are quite uh, enjoyable to read. And for some reason, they have combination of the two listed as Dear Boy. Now, I don't know why that is. It doesn't explain that, but it is definitely weird. Smoky purple vinyl with nice labels by the uh, Monterey Pop Festival organization. It's very cool. Now, this was issued in U.S. UK and Canada, and I think for a total wide world pressing of 4,000 copies, and if I'm not mistaken, they're all US pressings. So this is cool, man. I mean, I would love to see them do more of this sort of thing for Record Store Day. 
Um, I already got The Who at Monterey, then I got Big Brother, so I'd love to see an issue of The Birds, The Grateful Dead, and Jefferson Airplane. Um, I believe Jimmy's set was already released a long time ago, but uh, a nice matching release of that would go good, you know, with uh, the whole set. But um, I think that's going to do it. Um, I don't want to drag this video out forever, but I, I did want to talk about those two albums uh, a little bit uh, in detail. So um, the. Uh, I'll try and get another section of the video up here in another day or two, so until then... Hey, welcome to day two of my showing. I have two albums to show today. The first one is going to be Pink Fairies Never Never Land. And this is their 1971 masterpiece. This is just an excellent four star album. Uh, if you don't know this band, this is the one to check into. Their other two are not bad, but nowhere near as good as this one. Uh, originally released in 1971 on the Polydor label. And 180 gram on this pressing, and it was issued by Music on Vinyl in Europe. And uh, if you know this label, they always do really nice pressings. Um, Sound-wise, I thought it was good, but you always wish it was just a little bit better, but you have to take what you can get, I guess. But, um, yeah, this is, this is uh, such an awesome album. It's uh, got some different styles of music. It's got psychedelia, heavy rock, and it even has proto-punk. In the proto-punk, you know, that's no surprise because this band was formed out of the ashes of the Deviants. So it's got a song on here called Do It. And uh, that's their proto-punk track that's on here that's, you know, really well known. And uh, Henry Rollins even covered that song on his Do It album. Now I've never heard his version, I'm going to have to check into it. But, uh, yeah, this is so cool. So, if you don't know Pink Fairies, this is the one to definitely look into. The other album I have today is Granicus. And uh, this album was put out by an American band in Cleveland, Ohio. And it's their only album that came out when the band was still together. Um, it, it, it rates really high, you know, a lot of people, you know, rate it four stars and, you know, I don't have any problem with that. Um, it, it rocks hard, but there is some softer stuff on it, uh, maybe a little bit too much of that. Maybe it should have rocked out just a little bit more, but um, it's good. It's, uh, you know, you can hear that Led Zeppelin influence, you can, and the vocalist, you, you know, sounds a little bit like Getty Lee at times. So, uh, yeah, really good. Uh, the music's as good as the cover. I mean, so originally released on RCA, um, the Dynaflex pressing. Um, this is a 2015 reissue that Scorpio put out. They reproduced the original RCA label. And uh, this, this pressing just sounds really good. It's, it's, it's official. And uh, you can't go wrong with this one. So, uh, on side two, the band uh, did an ode to their hometown. The name of the song is Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, they just bash Cleveland. Call it uncool, ungroovy, I'm getting out of Cleveland, Ohio. And I guess they offend a lot of their local fans. You know, I heard they took some flack over that, but uh, yeah, check Granicus out. And incidentally, I checked out what Granicus means, and that was a river in Asia Minor, which was which is now modern, you know, a big portion of modern-day Turkey, and about 335 BC 
um, Alexander the Great uh, conquered the Persians, and that was like his first big battle. And it was it took place at the Granicus River, so that's where the band got their name. So that's gonna do it for this showing, and uh, there'll be another one coming, folks.